हेलो गाइस हाउ आर यू आई एम हरदीप सिंह वेलकम बैक टू योर ओन यूट्यूब चैनल आल्स अपडेट्स एंड रीसेंट एग्जाम्स फॉर मोर अपडेट्स रिलेटेड टू रीसेंट आल्स एग्जाम राइटिंग दस टॉपिक्स लिस्टनिंग रीडिंग प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट एंड स्पीकिंग क्यू कैट गेस वर्क प्लीज गाइस पार्टिसिपेट इन एवरी डे लिस्टनिंग एंड रीडिंग प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट टू अचीव योर डिजायर बैंड स्कोर इन योर एक्चुअल आल्स एग्जाम Please hit the like and subscribe button. Press the bell icon for the upcoming notifications. Don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page Alts updates and recent exams. You will hear a woman asking for information over the phone. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Good afternoon, Plainfield Community Centre. Yes, hi. I'm new in town and I was curious about the services the community centre has to offer. We offer a variety of recreational activities. What were you interested in in particular? Well, uh, everything, I guess. Okay, let's start with kids. I have a teenage son. What activities do you have for teens? Right now, during the school year, we have tutoring sessions for children and teens in all subjects. That would be good. He needs help with algebra. We can certainly help with that. Just have him come by any Wednesday or Saturday afternoon. That's when the tutoring sessions are scheduled. Fantastic. What about sports? Do you have sports activities for teens? We have tennis lessons on Sunday mornings for teens and Sunday afternoon for adults. Hmm. I don't think my son would like that, but my husband might. For myself, I'd be more interested in yoga. Do you offer yoga classes? We do. Our yoga classes take place on Tuesday and Thursday evenings. We divide it up into several groups, so there's one class for younger children, one for teens, and one for adults. Really? I doubt my husband and son would be interested, but I'd like to sign up for yoga. I also like reading. Do you have any book clubs? We have one just about to start. The first meeting will be next Friday morning. It will focus on early 20th century novels. Too bad it's Friday morning. I think my son would enjoy it, but of course he's in school at that time. Well, actually, that book club is for adults only. We may start one up for teens next summer, but we have nothing for that age group right now. Oh well, I suppose he has enough to keep him busy for now. Now what about fees? Do these classes and activities cost anything? Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at question 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. There's a small charge for non-members for each class. However, they're all free to members. Would you be interested in becoming a member? How much does the membership cost? Not much at all. The yearly fee is $75 for individuals and $225 for families. What do I get with the membership? You get free access to all classes and activities. and you can use our facilities like the tennis court, the exercise room and the meeting room. It's not a bad deal really. Could you tell me exactly where the center is located? It's at 107 Elliot Street. Is that Elliot with two L's or one L? 1L. E L I O T. It's right downtown. I think I know where it is. Do you have free parking? Yes. You can park just across the street. There's a garage there. That sounds easy enough. Maybe I'll come in one day next week and sign up for some classes. That would be fine, but don't come on Monday because we're closed that day. We're open Tuesday through Sunday. Oh, thanks for telling me. 
Maybe I'll stop in on Tuesday then. Can I pay for the classes with a personal check? We accept checks and credit cards. Okay. Thank you very much. You've been very helpful. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. You will hear a hike leader giving information about an upcoming hiking trip. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. As you listen to the first part of the talk, answer questions 11 to 15. Good evening, everyone. As you know, this is our last meeting before we set off on our annual week-long hiking trip. So tonight I'll be telling you everything you'll need to know to be ready for the trip. Let's talk about equipment first. Having the right equipment is essential for your comfort and safety. First, you'll need a warm and comfortable sleeping bag. However, you won't need to worry about carrying a tent, since we'll be sleeping in shelters along the way. Also, part of the fee you've paid for the trip goes toward food, so you won't need to put that on your packing list either. We found, though, that it's more efficient for each person to bring his or her own dishes, so be sure to pack a plastic bowl, a cup, and a fork, knife, and spoon. That's all you'll need in the way of dishes. Perhaps the most important item to put on your list is a comfortable pair of hiking boots. Nothing ruins a hike more than getting blisters and sores from ill-fitting boots. So make sure your boots fit you right. Shoes and sneakers aren't adequate for the type of hiking we'll be doing. Of course, a backpack is necessary for carrying your equipment. Make sure you have one that's lightweight and comfortable to carry. Walking poles have become popular among hikers recently, but we don't recommend them. They can get in the way when too many hikers are using them at once, and some serious injuries have been caused. So it's best to leave those at home. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh yes, some people have asked me about trail maps. They're available, but you really don't need them, as your hike leaders have scouted out the trail and will be guiding you along the way. And don't forget to bring a warm jacket. You may think you won't need one in this warm summer weather, but remember that evenings in the mountains can get quite cold. Is there anything else I need to tell you? Oh, yes, your guides will each be carrying a first aid kit, so that's one less thing for you to pack yourself. Remember, you'll be carrying your backpack all day, so keep your load light and don't overpack. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. I know you're all experienced hikers, but it's always worth repeating the rules of the trail since they're so important. These rules are in place for the safety of everyone on the trip. As you know, there'll be a hike leader walking at the head of the line who will show the group the way. At the end of the line will be the rear leader, or sweep. It's important to always stay ahead of this person while we're on the trail. There are several different trails on the mountain where we'll be hiking, and they cross each other at some points. 
When you come to any intersection of trails, stop and wait for the rest of the group to catch up. This way we can be sure that no one goes off on the wrong trail. Let me emphasize here how important it is to stay on the trail. We'll be climbing through some steep and rocky areas. Don't be tempted to go off on your own and try to climb some rocks. That can be quite dangerous. Also, it's not likely, but it is possible that we'll encounter some large wild animals along the way. The last thing you want to do is try to feed any of them. That will just encourage them to follow us, which could lead to some dangerous situations. One last thing before we set off hiking each morning. Be sure to fill up your water bottle. This is perhaps the most important safety rule. Dehydration can be a serious problem when you're out in the wilderness, so you must always be sure to carry an adequate supply of water with you. I think that covers just about everything. Uh, are there any questions? That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. You will hear a conversation between two students about a course feedback form. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen to the tape and answer the questions 21 to 26. Hi Anna, what are you doing? I'm filling in a feedback form. What form? The student feedback form for our course. Oh, I really forgot that. What's the date for handing that in? Tomorrow morning. Oh no, have you finished? I'm just beginning. Great, if you don't mind we could do it together. Of course. Did you bring your form? Uh, yes. OK, let's begin with the top first. It is a course name. Politics and Economics? No, it is our faculty name. Oh, sorry. According to the course data from the 20th of March to the 20th of June, I think the name of the course should be Global Economy. Are you sure that it is Economy, not Economics? Definitely. All right. The, the next item is the name of our subject advisor. Professor Robert Hansen. Right. Yeah, I like him very much. Me too. He's very handsome. Yeah, just like me. Yeah, nice and humorous. Yes, let's see the first point on the evaluation form, handouts and equipment. What's your opinion? I think the handouts are very good. I mean, they are clear and sent out on time. Yes, I agree, but do you think the words of handouts, well, maybe too many words? What do you mean? I mean, I have to spend so much time reading them, just like reading a book. Right, let's put that down. How about teaching equipment? I do really love the new multimedia. It's perfect. Yes, I agree, but the printer... It is really bad, too old, and sometimes it doesn't work. Shall we suggest a new printer instead of the old one? Why not? Let's turn to the second item. It is course structure. I do really like Robert's balanced design of the course. Yes, I agree. He organised it very well. Do you remember he sent out the course outline on the first class? Yes, it is very clear. I think it is a very good beginning and it is very important for the class. Right. I gained confidence from him after the first class. What about suggestions with course structure? Maybe... What? Don't you think we have too much research work in the first module? 
Research work? Yes. We only had one research in the second module. You are right. L let me put that down. Now look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen to the tape and answer the questions 27 to 30. The next one is practical training. Well, I think it's a good chance for our future job, right? Yes, I agree. I learn more knowledge from that than from other lectures. Right. What about suggestions for improvement? I think the department should supply more different places for us instead of just one. Yes, let's go on the next one. Assessment. What's your opinion? Fine. I got my feedback really quickly of one of my presentations. Yes, me too. But I think the exam time should be adjusted. What type of exam? Open book. Yes, I agree with you. Only 30 minutes is not enough. Yes. Anything else? What did you think about the essay? Too many. Right. There are three essays in one module. Yes. On other comments, what should we write? Jack, what do you think about the teaching? Well, I like Robert's teaching method. It is very flexible. Yes, me too. And I think we should advise Robert to help us to improve our writing skills. Right, that's all. Yes, that's all. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. In this section, you will hear a lecture about sports in Britain. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Having a drink at the local pub, going for a walk in the country, or watching sports on the television. These are all the main ways in which many British people like to relax on weekends or holidays. Such activities tell us about how modern British people like to spend their leisure time. But if you look more closely, we can see that these activities are not just recent inventions, but are deeply rooted in the British culture over many centuries. Today we will talk about some sports which we see played throughout the world and were born in Britain. Let's begin with football. As we all know, Britain is the place of origin of modern football. The idea of sports having seasons, like the football season, also comes from the natural rhythms of an agricultural society, where the timing of harvests and the general weather affected how people spend their time. Football is played in early spring, when the weather is wet and not too cold. In winter, bad weather kept people indoors, and they had not so much work to do on their farm. So, men used to doing hard work, our physical labor found they needed to release their energy and so got together regularly to play boisterous and fast games like football. Meanwhile, during the Renaissance, football had been regarded as a rough sport for the aristocratic young men, 
although all social classes used to join in on the local football match. Today, violence is still associated with football. Football hooligans. Supporters of rival teams sometimes clash before, during and after matches and run riot through the city or town, breaking windows and beating each other up. Of course, the football violence gets a lot of attention. Nowadays, before some big matches when trouble is expected, police usually patrol the streets, pubs close to the football courts, and some shops, and even lock their doors and shutter their windows. The Football Association was set up in 1863. It is the league or association that the major teams compete in, for a trophy title known as the FA Cup. The Football Association puts out a series of measures to control violence, so as to ensure a successful match. A more gentle sport that is very popular in the world is tennis. Wimbledon, a town near London, is where the world's top players gather to compete. It has been one of the major sports events of the British calendar. As we all know, tennis was invented in Britain, but few people know tennis owes its origins to the church. According to the records, by the mid-15th century, people were making a game of bouncing a ball off the side of the local churches or cathedrals, first using the hand and later a racket. Football, archery, tennis and other sports were frequently played in churchyards. In England, the sound of summer is said to be the sound of leather on the willow, the ball hitting a cricket bat. Cricket was one of the very first team sports in Britain to be played according to the same organised rules nationally. Before the Victorian era and in modern Britain, people from all walks of life played cricket. But in the 19th century, cricket became a sport associated with the upper classes. It was a kind of snob game, played by boys who attended public schools. And then the sport became popular in the public school system, in the colonies of Australia, New Zealand, India and Pakistan. British is full of idioms to the sport. Those who are not familiar with the game will be baffled by it, such as, that's not cricket means that's not fair, and to play the game means to be fair. The true sport of British kings and queens is not skiing or golfing, but horse racing. National horse races have been held throughout Britain for hundreds of years. The horse at the heart of medieval life was a symbol of authority and wealth and necessary to travelling, hunting and warfare. The sport of riding a horse is still considered rather snobbish, or an aristocratic sport, because the average British family cannot afford to own a horse. Meanwhile, there are stables which rent horses and offer riding courses at affordable prices. So certainly, almost everyone can afford to place a bet on a horse race now and then. As a sport of kings, kings and commoners alike enjoy betting on horses. The queen, who likes riding, also likes betting on horses and often attends some major races. Although she is extremely rich, she gets very excited when the horse she has placed her money on wins. There are two kinds of horse racing. The flat race, where horses and riders compete on a flat oval track. And the steeplechase, which is racing either across the countryside or around a course designed to represent the obstacles you might overcome in the countryside. The Grand National, which is set up in 1837 and is the world's most famous steeplechase. However, some horses are usually injured and badly hurt. Horses are sometimes shot. Animal lovers cannot accept that animals should be hurt and killed for people's entertainment. The biggest social event related to horse racing is the Royal Ascot, where people dress up and show off how fashionable they are, as well as watch the races and place their bets. Women especially wear very delicate and exotic hats and dress 
designed for the occasion. Television and newspapers will often comment on their outfits. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. So guys, don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. I'll update some recent exams for more updates related to recent IELTS exam writing as topics, listening, reading, practice test, and speaking. You cut guesswork. Please, guys, participate in everyday new IELTS listening and reading practice tests to achieve your desired band score in your actual IELTS exam. For more IELTS material, visit my official website www.ielts and recent exams.com. The link is given below in the description. If you need PDF files of latest IELTS material, then please join my Telegram channel. So guys, please write your score below the comment section. Again, thanks for listening. God bless you all guys. Stay tuned. Stay safe.